Welcome back to Fish Week 2. Last video or week we created a seascape background for our fish using a variety of different techniques to create the ocean and our sea life. If you're not complete with that, go ahead and do that now. Pause and then come back to use our second piece of paper to make our fish. So now that we're done with our seascape, we're going to put it off to the side, especially if it needs to dry. Our fish paper should be horizontal, which means it is landscape, it is more wide than it is tall. And we're going to draw an oval. The oval should be really big, but it should not touch the edges because we still need to fit in a tail and some fins. Once you've drawn your oval, and look at mine, it's not perfect, which is totally okay. From the top to the bottom on one side of your oval, you're going to draw a curved line. That's going to be the fish's face. After you've drawn the fish's face, we're going to give it a dorsal fin or a back fin. That could be a big triangle. That could be kind of rectangular. It could be bumpy. You decide. But behind the face on the top, you're going to give it a fin. It goes back and then down. You want to make sure that it is big enough to be able to cut out easily. So when you do the bottom fin, make sure your triangle is nice and wide. After you have your top and your bottom fin, we're going to do the tail. So the opposite side of the face, we're going to make a tail using a very big M. So watch first. I'm going to go up, then make a wide middle part. Don't touch the body. Go up again and then come back down. See how it looks like a really wide M? Remember, try to make it big enough so that it's easy to cut out. The next thing we are going to do is create the face. So we're gonna do a circle for the eye. And then for our fishy lips, I'm gonna show you a trick. We're basically going to draw a heart. So turn your fish sideways so it's swimming up, and inside your face, at the edge, draw a heart. Once you've drawn your heart, draw a line from the top to the bottom of the heart, and now it looks like fishy lips. This is a great time to remind you that your fish does not have to look exactly like my fish. Just make sure your fish is almost the size of the paper, and not too small. The next thing we're going to do are our scales. For the scales, we're going to use bumpy lines, and it's okay to practice on another piece of paper first. But what you're going to do is have your fish swim downwards. You want to draw really big and light for this part, and we're going to start from the left corner and make upside down U's that hop along the edge of the fish face. See how I don't pick up my pencil and I hop? Come back down to the face, hop, and then stop wherever my pencil stops at the edge of the fish. The bigger you make the scales, the easier they will be to color in. The next row, and here's the trick, is that you will go from the top of the bump to the next bump, as if you were bouncing from bump to bump. See how there's some room at the edge after I've bounced? Those, you're gonna have to pretend like there's somewhere else to bounce to. Watch this. From this one, I'm gonna go off to the side and stop at the edge of my oval. This one bounce off to the side, but stop at the edge of my oval. My scales should be about the same size in terms of how tall they are, but it's okay if they are a little different. The next row, I'm gonna bounce, bounce, and then bounce off to the side. Bounce off to the side. So practice that if you like to, and then when you feel comfortable, make these big bounces from the tops of the bumps to create your scales. Find the top, bounce, bounce, bounce. Make the ends also bounce off to the side.
Once you've reached the end, squeeze a few more scales in. And then we're going to trace our fish. So you need a Sharpie or some sort of marker. If you plan to paint later, use Sharpie or crayon. And pause now to trace your fish. I'm gonna add a little iris so that my fish is looking forward. If you wanna add these, you can. I'm gonna add a little extra smile. And I wanna add eyelashes to mine. You don't have to, but there's just some fun things you can do. Maybe you wanna give your fish eyebrows or glasses. Whatever you do, make sure it's inside of your fish because the next thing you're going to do is cut out your fish carefully. As you're cutting out, if you accidentally cut off a part of your fish, like a fin or its tail, don't worry. You're going to still color it or paint it in. And then at the end, you can glue it next to your fish when we glue our fish onto our seascape background. Before we get to coloring our fish, this is a good time to check to make sure your fish will fit on your paper well. So place your fish onto your background to see if it looks good. If it's a little too big, you might want to cut down some of the edges of your fish. If it's too small, you might want to consider maybe making a little more on your background. But once you have sized up your fish with your background, it's time to color. And kind of like how we did our seascape, I'm gonna show you different ways to do it. The goal for your fish is for it to be bright and beautiful. I'm using crayon, and you're gonna to want to not just color in your fish's scales, but also maybe add some line designs. So you see my line chart there. I'm using crayon because I'm also going to do some watercolor on it. If you want to just color it, you can do that. If you just want to paint it, you can do that as well. So take your time, make sure you're not rushing, and decorate your fish. My video is sped up so that way this doesn't take a really, really long time for you to watch, but you get the idea. Make lots of designs, be really creative. So you can see I'm doing lots of line designs and crayon so I can do wax resist, which means that after I do my crayon, I'm gonna paint on top of it with watercolor, fill in all my white spaces. So take your time however you're doing it to finish your fish and pause now. Once you're done with your fish and it's dry, you're going to take your background and you're going to glue your fish onto your background. Please make sure that the fish does not have any fins sticking off of the page and needs to completely be on the page. If you don't have glue, that's okay. You can start taking your photo. But the goal is that your photo is straight on and there's not a lot of distracting things in the background. So for me, I'm gonna go get this white piece of paper, put it underneath, take my camera, and line up the top and the bottom of my page with the top and the bottom of my camera. And there you have it, your unique fish on your seascape background.